Hello, sixth grade. We, today we're going to be working on EDM Lesson 6-9, Reversing Operations. What are you going to need for this lesson? Well, you'll need your student math journal, a pencil, and probably some extra paper. So pause the video and make sure you have all of your materials. All right, guys, our lesson objective for today is to learn about inverse operations and to use inverse operations to solve equations. So what are inverse operations? Inverse operations means reversing the operation. So when I think about this, I kind of think about when I'm getting ready in the morning and I'm getting ready to leave the house, get all packed up, I get my stuff in the car, I head down the drive, I'm heading down in one direction, I get to the end of the driveway, okay? And well, oh, I forgot my lunchbox. So I have to stop and I have to put my car in reverse. I'm going the opposite, okay? And so when I back up and I put my car into reverse, I end up right back where I started. So going forward has canceled out, or going in reverse has canceled out what I did already. And so inverse is like reversing the operation. So you probably know some of these already. The inverse of addition is subtraction and the inverse of multiplication is division. They're the opposite of each other. And we're gonna be using that idea today. So let's take a look at the math message. Abraham enjoys number tricks. Below is one of his favorites. Pick a secret number, perform each step, and record the resulting value. So guys, shh, my secret number is gonna be 10. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add three to the number. Well, three plus 10 is 13. Then it says to multiply the sum by 10. Well, 13 times 10 is 130. Then I have to divide by five. 130 divided by five equals 26. Then I'm gonna subtract 26. Well, 26 minus six is 20 and divide by two and I have 10. What number did I get? Well, it's my secret number, number 10. All right, pause the video and try it with your own secret number. Isn't that amazing how it works? So let's talk about how it works. Well, we're gonna use the secret number of N. Now, N could be any number. That's why I'm using this variable. And so let's take a look at what this looks like when I add three to my variable. Well, I get N plus three. Now I'm gonna multiply that by 10. So I get 10 times the quantity N plus three, Ooh, this is a good place to use distributive property. So I'm gonna do 10 times n and 10 times three, and I'm gonna end up with 10n plus 30, okay? But now my next step, C says divide by five. Oh boy, so I have 10n plus 30 divided by five. Well guys, I'm gonna take my 10n and divide by five. 10n divided by five is 2n. I'm gonna take my 30 divided by five and 30 divided by five is six, but I can't add those parts together. These are not like terms. And so what I'm gonna end up with is two N plus six. All right, so now I have two N plus six and I have to subtract six. So it looks like this, two N plus six minus six. Well, these are the inverse, the opposite of each other. So adding six and subtracting six cancel each other out like they're not even there. So I'm left with, well, just 2n. And my last step then says divide by two. Well, 2n divided by two equals, well, just plain old n. So we're back to our number. So the reason this number trick works is because we are using dun, 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 inverse operations. So we are reversing all of the things that we did at the beginning. So let's take a look at some more of these problems. Marcy took her secret number, added five, doubled the sum and subtracted two. Her result was 58. What was Marcy's secret number? Hmm. We're gonna be working backwards here. And guys, I think you should pause the video and see if you can figure out what her secret number was. Take a minute, pause it, can you figure it out? Now we're gonna to try to figure it out together. So we started with 58. 
and we're going to work backwards. So I'm going to look at the last thing she did. Well, the last thing Marcy did was sub to subtract two. So what's the opposite, the inverse of subtracting two? Well, it's adding two. And so I'm going to do 58 plus two, and that gives me 60. All right, let's see what she did next. Well, the next thing, we're starting with 60 here. Next thing she did was to double the sum. Hmm. What is the inverse or the opposite of doubling? Well, doubling is times two. And so the inverse of multiplying by two is dividing by two. So 60 divided by two equals 30. All right, so now we're at 30. And we have to do the last step. So her first step, our last step, was she added five. But I want to know what's the inverse or the opposite of adding five. Because remember, I'm working backwards. The opposite of adding five is subtracting five. And so I get to the number 25. So I think Marcy's secret number is 25. But how do I know for sure? Well, I'm going to check. So let's do all the steps that Marcy did. But we're going to start with the number 25 and see if we end up at 58, just like she did. So 25 plus 5 equals 30. 30 times 2, because she doubled, times 2 equals 60. Then it says she subtracted 2, so 60 minus 2 equals, look, 58. We ended up at the same spot. That's how we know we're correct. So guys, we're going to start working through the student math journal pages. We're on page 293. We're going to do number 1. So here's our first problem. 4,509 equals X minus 748. So guys, the goal here, anytime we solve one of these, is to get the variable alone on one side of the equation. And that means we have to get rid of all the stuff with the variable. So I have a minus 748 with my X. So I have to ask myself, what is the inverse or the opposite of subtracting 748? Well, the opposite is adding 748. But here's the trick. Do you remember those pan balances? We have to keep this in balance. It's an equation. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So if I'm going to add 748 to cancel out my subtracting 748, I have to do it to both sides. So here's what this looks like. On the left-hand side, 4,509 plus 748 gives us 5,257. On the left-hand side, we have a minus 748 and a plus 748. If I put those two together, they equal zero. So it's really X and a zero. So all I have left on the right-hand side is X. But we must, here's the key, guys. You always, always, always have to check your work by substituting your answer for the variable. That means wherever the number, wherever the letter X is, you have to put the number 5,257 and then solve to see if it's right. So let's check it. So here we have 4,509 equals 5,257 minus 748. Take a minute and check. You can even use calculator. And here we go. Guess what? They're equal. That tells us that we're correct. That X does equal 5,257. Let's try another problem. Let's work on number two from page 293. Here we go. Mm, that's an interesting looking problem. Okay, we've got, remember our goal is to get the variable alone on one side of the equation. How do I read that problem? Well, we read this problem, y divided by seven equals 18. Remember that fraction bar is also division. Okay, so now I have y and divided by seven on one side. I need to know, well, what's the inverse or the opposite of dividing by seven? Well, the opposite of division is multiplication. So the opposite of dividing by seven is multiplying by seven. But remember, it's an equation. To keep it balanced, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we're gonna multiply each side by seven. On this left-hand side, well, if I divide by 7 and I multiply by 7, they cancel each other out. And so I'm just left with y. On the other side, I have 18 times 7, which equals 126. Okay. I can check and see if I'm right. If 
by substituting the answer for the variable. So where this y is, I'm going to put the number 126. Let's check. Here we go. 126 divided by 7 equals 18. Well, if we do our division, guess what? It equals 18. 18 equals 18. That's how we know we're correct. Let's try another problem. Run number three. Five and seventy-five hundredths equals D plus twenty-nine hundredths. Remember, guys, our goal is to get the variable alone on one side of the equation. So to get it alone, I have to get rid of this plus twenty-nine hundredths. So what's the inverse or the opposite of adding twenty-nine hundredths? Well, the inverse is. Why don't you try it? Pause the video. See if you can figure it out and check back in in a minute. All right, guys, so what is the inverse of adding 29 hundredths? Well, it's subtracting 29 hundredths. And just like before, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. You have to keep it in balance. So 5 and 75 hundredths minus 29 hundredths, well, that's going to equal 5 and 46 hundredths. On the right hand side, Adding 29 hundredths and subtracting 29 hundredths cancel each other out. And so we're just left with D. So 5 and 46 hundredths equals D. But we need to check by substituting your answer for the variable. So when we check, it looks like this 5 and 75 hundredths equals 5 and 46 hundredths plus 29 hundredths. We add them together. Here we go. We get 5 and 75 hundredths. It works. Awesome. So, guys, I want you to pause the video and I want you to complete Student Math Journal page 293, numbers 4 through 6, the last three problems on this page. And I want you to try them on your own. Remember, you need to figure out how to get that variable alone on one side by using the inverse of the operation that's there. Then, watch the rest of the video to check these three problems. Don't forget to get the variable alone on one side of the equation. All right, so here's number four, guys. One and two thirds equals 5K. And our goal is to get that variable alone on one side of the equation. Remember that 5K really means five times K. And so I'm asking myself, what is the inverse or the opposite of multiplying by five? Well, the opposite of multiplying by five is dividing by five. Mm, division with mixed numbers. We haven't done that in a little while, but we can do it. So let's take a look. Remember that when we divide with fractions, we're going to use this keep change reciprocal idea. So one and two thirds divided by five. First, we're going to take that one and two thirds. We are going to make it a fraction. Crap. How do I? All right, so we are working on student math journal problem number four. One and two thirds divided by one and two thirds equals 5K. Remember, our goal is to get the variable alone on one side of the equation. So I have to ask myself, remember 5K really means five times K. So what is the inverse or the opposite of multiplying by five? Well, it's dividing by five. And I know we haven't done division with mixed numbers in a little while, but you remember how to do this. Remember, it's keep change reciprocal. So we've got one and two thirds divided by five. I am gonna make my one and two thirds into a fraction, which would be five thirds. I'm gonna change the sign from division to multiplication. And I'm going to use the reciprocal of my divisor, which is 5. The reciprocal of 5 is 1 fifth. Now I'm going to multiply across. So 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 times 3 is 15, and so I'm going to get 5 fifteenths, which is simplified to 1 third, because we can divide by 5 over 5. All right, so guys, 1 and 2 thirds divided by 5 is 1 third. And 5 times k divided by 5 is going to equal, well, k. So we know that 1 third equals k. But we have to check 
by substituting our answer for the variable. So wherever that K is, we're going to put the number one third. Well, guys, one and two thirds equals five times one third. Five times one third is five thirds. And we know that five thirds equals one and two thirds. And so here we are. We are correct. Let's take a look at our next problem. Here we have 15 equals 5s. Our goal is to get that variable alone on one side, so we need to get rid of this 5. Remember, this is 5 times s. So let's ask ourselves, what is the inverse of multiplying by 5? Well, it's dividing by 5. And so we may have a little trick. This may be a little tricky, but we can do it. 18 divided by 5 is, well, 18 divided by 5. Yeah, it's a fraction. They're the same. They sound the same because they are the same. And then 5s divided by 5 is just s. Okay, now we might want to simplify this. 18 fifths simplifies to 3 and 3 fifths. So s equals 3 and 3 fifths. But we always have to check by substituting our answer for the variable. Now, guys, if it was me, if it was me, I would change the mixed number to a decimal because it's easier to calculate with. So three and three fifths, three fifths equals six tenths. So three and six tenths equals three and six tenths. They sound the same because they are the same. So I'm gonna use this decimal form in my checking. Here we go. 18 equals five times three and six tenths. Well, when I do the math, guess what? Five times three and six tenths equals 18. 18 equals 18. That's how we know we're correct. All right, let's take a look at number six. Three and one eighths equals m minus two and a fourth. Remember that goal is to get the variable alone on one side of the equation. So we need to get rid of that minus two and a fourth. So what's the inverse or the opposite of subtracting two and a fourth? Well, it's adding two and a fourth. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. All right. So let's do this addition. Remember, guys, that one fourth equals two eighths. So really, when I'm adding a fourth here, I'm really adding two eighths. So one eighth plus two eighths equals three eighths, and two plus three equals five, and so we get five and three eighths. And on the right hand side, if we subtract two and a fourth and add two and a fourth, they cancel each other out, and we're just left with m. All right, but as always. You have to check by substituting your answer for the variable. So wherever that M is, we need to put in the number five and three eighths. Here we go. Three and one eighth equals five and three eighths minus two and a fourth. Remember one fourth equals two eighths. So three eighths minus two eighths equals one eighth and five minus two equals three. There we go. We are correct. So to sum it up guys, remember, the goal is always to get the variable alone on one side of the equation. And to do that, we're going to use inverse operations. We're going to use the opposite of the operation that's happening there to cancel it out. Make sure you remember this as you do your practice today. Good luck.